cameras can see everything. They can see down into the depths of the ocean, and up, millions of miles into space. Furthermore, they capture moments and help filmmakers tell better stories. In our last episode, we discussed how a lens works, and different looks each lens type has in a film. But in this episode we'll be going over how they work with the camera body, and how the camera body functions. If you are new here, welcome, and be sure to subscribe. Spectrum Film School, making learning fun. This is going to be a long one. So please go grab a drink. The image sensor is one of the most important component of any digital camera. Like films found in the camera during the olden days, the image sensor captures the light coming in through the lens to form an image. As it might sound simple in just a click of a button, there's a whole lot that goes into the making of an image. An image sensor is a light-sensitive element which can sense how many photons have arrived at a particular location on its surface. This creates a charge that needs to be converted into a signal. The signal is then amplified before it is converted into a digital form. Sensor sizes APS-C 23.6 mm by 15.8 mm The most common sensor size in consumer and semi-professional cameras. The APS-C sensor. It applies a crop factor between 1.5 to 1.7 to mounted lenses. It's also found in Sony compact system cameras. Canon EOS 77D. APSH. 28.1 mm by 18.7 mm. This type of sensor was featured in Canon's older 1D series of cameras. These typically combine the slightly larger sensor with a modest pixel count for speed and high ISO performance and apply a 1.3 crop factor to mounted lenses. The crop factor was useful for shooting sport and wildlife as it effectively lengthened the lens you were using. But the sensor size has since been discontinued like the Canon 1D Mark III. The other camera in this sensor line is Sigma SD Quattro H. Doesn't it look tiny and cute? Let us know in the comments down below. Full frame. 36 mm by 24 mm. This is the largest sensor size found in 35 mm cameras. It shares its dimensions with a frame of 35 mm negative film and so applies no crop factor to lenses. It used to be the reserve of very high-end cameras, for professionals only, but the technology is getting more affordable. It also used to be true that full-frame sensors could only be found in very large cameras. But some manufacturers have found ways to shrink camera sizes, while keeping a large sensor. Some of the cameras are Canon EOS 1DX Mark II. Sony A7 III. Red Epic W 4 thirds 17.3 mm by 13 mm As used in both 4 thirds models and micro 4 thirds models, these are roughly a quarter of the size of a full frame sensor. Their size results in a 2 times crop factor, doubling the effective focal length of a mounted lens. The most common cameras are Panasonic GH4, Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera. Now that you know all about sensor sizes and how an image sensor functions, let's go over what you get on full frame over the crop sensor. 
full-frame cameras will give you the highest dynamic range. In low-light performance full-frame is so much sharper, clearer, and gives you less noise and more detail. While depth of field is largely determined by your lens and its maximum aperture, the camera body can help you achieve that beautiful blurred bokeh effect as well. Full-frame sensors allow for a shallower depth of field than their cropped counterparts. Because there's no crop factor on full-frame sensors, you're able to get a wider field of view with your lens. Keep in mind that if you choose a full-frame camera you have to invest in full-frame lenses, which can be just as expensive as, if not pricier than, the body itself. If you've stayed with us this long, here are some bonus components of the camera body. Viewfinder This is a camera component that shows the photographer the area of the subject that will be included in a photograph. In modern cameras it usually is part of a direct visual or range finder focusing system and may also be used to display exposure settings or meter information. A digital camera LCD is used to frame shots, check camera settings and review images. This allows photographers to make accurate judgments of their work on the fly without having to upload images to a device with a high quality display. Memory cards This holds the photos you take so choosing a memory card with a high capacity means it will hold more photos. Common capacities for memory cards range from 16 GB to 128 GB. All cameras use battery power for their electronic displays as well as operations like opening and closing the mechanical shutter, metering exposures and driving the autofocus motors and stabilization mechanisms in the camera and lens. Camera shutter this is a curtain in front of the camera sensor that stays closed until the camera fires. When the camera fires, the shutter opens and fully exposes the camera sensor to the light that has passed through your lens. After the sensor is done collecting the light, the shutter closes immediately, stopping the light from hitting the sensor. Camera mount This is a mounting system used to connect a lens to a camera. It's important that the lens flange focal distance and the camera mount flange distance are exactly the same, or focusing issues may arise. Camera mounts vary from manufacturers. A good example is the E-mount on Sony cameras. This allows for multiple camera bodies with the same mount to be used on just a single lens. The flash. This is a device that emits light momentarily. You can use the flash's light to compensate for the lack of brightness when shooting in dimly lit situations like indoors or night scenes. Thanks to the instant exposure, using the flash can also be effective to prevent camera shake and subject blur. All of these components make up a camera body, but as you've learned, each sensor has a different feature that make camera bodies uniquely different. Understanding the uniqueness will help you get the best camera for you. So, if you're out to start your filmmaking journey, and you're probably like us, who didn't buy Bitcoin back in 2010, you don't have to save for the next 10 years to buy Arial Ixa, or even Sony Venice. Use the budget you have and be creative. Today, even a smartphone camera can make amazing images. We've reached a point of sufficiency, that image quality is no longer a big concern. What matters is can you tell a story? We are done with parts of a camera. In the next series we'll explore the exposure triangle, and in the first episode we'll dive deeper into aperture and how it affects your overall image in filmmaking. Subscribe, click the bell, and we'll see you again in the next series.